Welcome to the Chronicles Final Four preview. I'm Andy Moore. Alongside me is Scott Rich. Today we're going to be breaking down Duke in the Final Four. Uh, Duke starts with West Virginia Saturday. Scott, what do you think about this West Virginia team, and what do you think Duke's chances are? Well, I think the interesting thing about West Virginia is they're, they are a very similar team to the Baylor team that Duke beat in the Elite Eight. They're a very long, athletic team. They play a zone. West Virginia plays a 1-3-1, although Baylor played a 2-3. But I think the thing that's really going to be a difference in the game is although West Virginia is a very solid rebounding team, they're not a very tall team. They have no one on their roster taller than six foot nine, and most of their best rebounders are actually also their best perimeter scorers, guys like um, Devin E. Banks and Deshaun Butler. So it's really going to be a problem, I think, for them guarding a guy like Brian Zubek down low. And the fact that Duke's wing players and Duke's guards are also very good rebounders, I think, bodes well for the Blue Devils matching up against the rebounding prowess of West Virginia's perim perimeter players. Yeah, it's, it's also interesting to point out that uh, not, not only does Duke really seem to kind of have the advantage down low in their, their size, I, history has shown a little bit that Duke has the advantage uh, shooting-wise on the perimeter. Uh, in the Baylor game, Duke did not really have that great of a shooting day, and Kyle Singer actually finished the game 0 for 10, did not even make a single field goal, and yet Duke still won. I, 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 the common wisdom says that if there's a zone defense, if you're having a bad shooting day, you're going to lose the game because they're, you're being forced to take those outside shots, and if you're not knocking them down, you're going to lose. But Duke has shown that they're so good on the offensive boards, that doesn't really seem to matter. Um, so I think the Baylor game really showed that Duke matches up well with West Virginia, and maybe while Duke fans are freaking out about this game, maybe they shouldn't be freaking out that much. Yeah, and I think the one thing that was most encouraging from the Baylor game is the way Duke attacked that 2-3 zone. If you really watched the game, Duke really didn't rely too much on trying you know, to dribble through the zone. Yes, mm -hmm. Nolan Smith had some good penetration, but the way Duke beat the zone was passing it inside, passing it to Brian Zubek or Lance Thomas on the high post, and passing out, working that inside out and working that rotation around the outside. And any coach will say that's how you beat a zone, whether it's a 2-3, a 1-3-1, one, one, whatever. So that was very encouraging coming in. Again, the 1-3-1 one, is a very different type of zone. It's a lot more trapping as opposed to guarding the inside. But that's very encouraging for the Duke team heading into this game against another zone team. It is very encouraging. One wonders if Bob Huggins has anything up his sleeve. He's, he's known for being a very very slick coach and a very smart coach. And So I'm sure he watched that Baylor game and he might be seeing something that we haven't seen yet. Uh, moving on, though, uh, Duke, if they beat uh, West Virginia, will be playing either Baylor or, I'm sorry, excuse me, Butler or uh, Michigan State in the National Championship game on Monday. Uh, Scott, in your opinion, which team do you think Duke uh, would most like to face in that game? Well, being a little biased, you know, being a Michigan Wolverines fan, but I really do think that Duke does match up a little bit better against Butler. And the main reason being, even though Michigan State isn't a very tall team, every Tom Izzo coach team is epitomized by their ability to rebound and their toughness inside. Michigan State has a bunch of good rebounders, guys like Raymar Morgan and Darrell Summers, who even though they aren't, you know, Brian Zubek or Miles Plumley or Mason Plumley's size, are really physical and really get in there down low. So I think of those two teams, Michigan State is better suited to negate Duke's biggest advantage in this Final Four, which is their size and is their offensive rebounding. Now, Butler is also a good rebounding team. They have really good players like Gordon Hayward and Matt Howard. But again, I think in terms of matchups, Duke would rather play a team that they can work the ball inside, which has become what defines this team this year, as opposed to a team like Michigan State that can probably battle with them down there a little bit more. Hey, you know, it's interesting. I actually uh, disagree with you here. I think that Duke would uh, rather face... Uh, rather face Michigan State here. Michigan State obviously missing their, their star point guard, and they really don't have many scores other than, other than Summers and Morgan. Uh, Morgan is playing very well. He's, had, he's averaging a double-double in the tournament. But I, 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 while I think he would have given Duke trouble in the past when Duke is not deep down low, I, this is just, as we've said, just over and over again, it's a totally different Duke team down there. And I really think by running a rotation of the big four down there, I... I Really see him being stopped. I now, think you just coined a new term there, right? The there. Big, four? big Four. Yeah, yeah. how about we need that? To copyright that. <laughs> the, if if Duke it does run into trouble, Michigan State it will be through Darrell Summers. Summers reminds me a lot of these quick, athletic guards that uh, Nolan Smith and John Sheriff had trouble guarding this year. You think of you think of Grievous Vasquez, and you think of the Georgetown crew. Um, but I think you know if if they are able to stop that, and again, if Duke is able to shoot the ball decently. Uh, I think that it'll be probably a preferable matchup for Duke in the National Championship game. So uh, 
So, so saying again that we get past that, West Virginia, who do, who do you think is going to come out in, ma- in the national championship, and what do you think the score will be? Well, I, I do think that Butler is going to take down Michigan State, and I, I think it is a very interesting storyline, the fact that Butler is obviously playing in Indianapolis, which is their hometown, and Michigan State was in a very similar situation last year when they were playing in Detroit, and you know all the national columnists wrote about, oh, Michigan State is, you know, symbolizing all the, you know, the strength of Michigan and, you know, this downtrodden state and they're all pulling for this team. I wasn't necessarily pulling for them. But I think that is an interesting storyline. And I do think that Michigan State showed last year when they beat a superior UConn team, at least in my opinion, that that does have a little weight. And that's why I think Butler's going to win that game. And I also think when you look at Butler, um, Gordon Hayward is probably the best pure player, the best NBA prospect player in this Final Four, I think, which is ironic considering Butler is the, you know, the smallest school in the Final Four. So I think he's going to have a big impact. I don't think Michigan State's going to be able to necessarily stop him. And I see Butler winning that game by four or five points. So, so who do you think is going to win the national championship then and, uh, if, if, if it's Duke and Butler? Um, I, again, I, I do, I'm cautiously optimistic about Duke's chances here. I think that None of these teams in the Final Four match up with Duke down low. And that's something we would never say is an advantage in the past. Yep. If you know, we were playing a team like Kentucky or a team like Kansas, it would be a much different story. But Duke got lucky and doesn't have to play DeMarcus Cousins, doesn't have to play right. Cole Aldridge. And I think that's going to be the difference in the Final Four. And I, I, not to jinx it, but I do see Duke coming up with the national championship here. Well, don't bet against Hoosiers, Scott. <laughs> No, I will, say, I will say this. Regardless of who Duke plays, if it is Butler or Michigan State, look for this to maybe be one of the lowest scoring national yep. championship games since probably like the 1950s when, when CC and Y was playing. It will playing not be it. pretty. Uh, yeah, it's been said over and over again Duke wins ugly. And if Duke does win that national championship, it will be winning ugly. But I don't think Duke fans really have a problem with that. All right, that's all we've got for you. Thanks for listening. Uh, tune in next time to the Chronicles Sports Podcast.